All right. All right, everybody, we are live today on Agents Who Win. This is a Monday Coaching Tips. Todd is unavailable today. He's off doing some big things. Uh, so it's me, and I have a special guest, someone I'm really excited to be speaking with today, uh, Jason Lash, Coach Jason Lash. Jason is a club wealth coach, as I am, except he's on a higher tier level uh, coaching some some ballers at, at Club Wealth. So he's a master of recruiting. He's got two real estate teams, one in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and one in South Florida. Where exactly in South Florida? Uh, we, we cover, uh, we'll go to Miami, but we, we cover kind of both, uh, Fort Lauderdale through uh, West Palm is really what we focus on, kind of the southeast side over there. Uh, we do have a lead in Miami, and it, we, we will go there, but that's not really our focus. Yeah, so incredible! The incredible coach Jason Lash is on <laughs> on the line with us today. So thank you, Jason, for taking well, this for uh, to being our guest on short notice. I just got back from spring break, visiting Georgia, visiting some mountains. Which uh, in Florida there are no mountains, uh, so it was a nice change of scenery. We got to see Savannah and Blue Ridge, um, yeah. so that was a good spring break getaway. Uh, how how are things going? You're in Michigan right now, right? Because I yeah. know you travel back and forth. Yeah, we're I'm in Michigan this week. Uh, I get down to Florida probably about every about every six to eight weeks or so. I go down there for a couple just for a couple of days. Are usually short trips, uh, which I, I'm not going to lie. Living in Michigan and get to this, in the winter time to get out there for about 48 hours and see some sun isn't the worst thing in the world. So I do enjoy that. But uh, yeah, I was down there last week. Yeah, last week I was down there, and um, I'm here for a while. I don't think I'm going to get down there again until May, but. Uh, here now. <laughs> I was going to jokingly say you don't want to come down this week because we're freezing here. It's 56 degrees. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I went down there in December and there was a warning because lizards were falling from the trees. Iguanas oh. were falling from the trees. <laughs> yeah. When I was down there in December and I was like, what, what, what the heck is this? I go back to Michigan for that. You got to wear a helmet. Yeah, they're, they're, they're going dormant and falling from the trees because it's so cold. Yeah. So, so. so tell us about that. It's, it's unusual for someone to have real estate teams operating in two cities. So, yeah. Um, how is that even possible? Well, I, I mean, I, it happened on accident. It wasn't my intention. I, I've actually was, was never been in Boca in my life until I started selling down there. Uh, honestly, one of my agents on my team uh, moved to Florida, uh, went to another brokerage, and uh, was bugging me for the, for about six months, telling me, say, hey, if we were doing what we're doing in Michigan, down there in Southeast Florida, we would be crushing it. So um, I I kind of said, well, I'm going to prove her wrong. And I decided to just kind of test my stuff out. Yeah. And sure enough, it worked. We got a bunch of leads, popped a couple of deals right away. Um, and here it is. I want to maybe, I, it went up being an accident to, you know, I, I followed her, um, not uh, not the, um, uh, you know, not, that wasn't going for the market. She, she could have moved to Kansas. It, yeah. it had nothing to do with Florida. It just happened to happen that way. Yeah, thankfully. <laughs> thankfully, yeah. Florida. Yeah. So, um, so. Before I know you've been with EXP for what a couple of years? How long? Yeah, we're going on uh, in June. Will be our our two, we're, we're, we got three months away. We're on our uh, going to be on our uh, two year anniversary. Okay, so almost two years, and yep. and from my understanding, it, it would be pretty hard to create two teams in in two different cities if oh, you were on your own or with another. I mean, group. if you're going to do it, you're going to have two splits, two desk fees, two everything. So yeah, uh, I, I'm sure it's possible, but it'll be twice it'll be twice as expensive. That's the one beauty about uh, our our setup here is it's one split for the entire country. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's something that, you know, most people won't have the pleasure of taking advantage of, yeah. but it's nice that it's there if you're able to. I, I wouldn't be doing this if with my own brokerage. That I, I wouldn't be able to afford it. Yeah. So how, how big are your teams in Florida and in Michigan? So in Florida, we have, I think it's five or six people in Florida. Uh, in Michigan, we're at 17. Uh, we, we got, we, we we're adding a few people, so we're, we're we're somewhere between twenty three to twenty five agents on our team. Depend, we're we're a couple of them are at the onboarding process. So right. when I came to EXP just a couple of years ago, I only had three. So right. we've really really gone up. Um, had have had let a few of people go and a part of the process, but we're growing like crazy in both Michigan and in Florida. Yeah. So you know that's why I wanted to have you on today because you're growing like crazy. Yeah. And uh, a lot of a lot of agents, team leaders. Uh, realtors in general, they want to begin a team and they want to grow a team sure. and they love to be growing like crazy. Yeah. So, um, yeah. so you're a coach with Club Wealth. Tell us a little bit yep. about that. I, I congratulate you because I saw you recently uh, moved up a notch yeah. to, are you tier, tell me which tier you're in now. I, I am technically tier four. 
Um, I probably could be, I'm not going to on the door at tier five. I, I'd okay. have to run the numbers real, real close. Uh, if nothing else, just because uh, Michigan's so seasonal, uh, within a month or two with our spring season starting, um, I would be, in, I'll be at tier five here real soon. So I, I might be there right now. I'm technically a tier four uh, a client though at Club Wealth. I see your post all the time of how many leads you're getting like every yep. few days. And that that's pretty exciting. So you're yep. doing, you must be doing a ton of marketing to yeah. be generating all the leads and you're, you're sending out tons of offers on a yep. regular basis. I, I'm, I'm, I'm watching those on, on Facebook, all of your updates. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We, uh, uh, I just did this weekend. I'm looking right now. 131 leads we generated this weekend. Uh, I think our, our record for a weekend is about 150. So, but that was a good week, 130 uh, leads for a weekend. So we spent a lot of, I spent a lot of money on marketing and advertising, uh, a lot of Google, a lot of realtor.com. I am a fan of realtor.com, a little bit of Zillow, um, yeah. uh, but uh, uh, yeah, we spent a lot of money on marketing. And based on your current trajectory, how many transactions do you think you might close for 2021? My commitment was 251 transactions this year. I'm on pace for about 300. So um, and knock on wood. And, and again, the summer and spring summer market hasn't even started yet in Michigan. So, uh, you know, we're only 90 days into this, not even 90 days into this. But um, I, 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 I'm, I'm projecting to blow way past my commitment of 251. So I, I think we're going to be somewhere between 275 and 300 in that area. Yeah, that's, that's as we, we got more people coming on, especially as these people come on. It should ease that we should be, be able to get that. That's incredible. Yeah. And uh, I believe your coach is Michael Hellickson. Is that right? Yep. Yep. Michael's my coach. The man, so, the myth, the legend, the the great God, the, the great Hellickson. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I said that. <laughs> Wait, so, uh, I mean, he he he's uh, he he reminds us all the time of how many transactions he was doing. Yeah, and uh, it's some kind of incredible number that I think he was doing that, about one hundred fifty uh, a month, one hundred twenty to one hundred fifty a month, or somewhere around there. Right. Yeah. So he's an animal. He's, He's an awesome person to be coaching under, yeah. and uh, I'm I'm sure that's helped you in in all of your efforts, especially recruiting. So, sure. um, what would what did your team look like a year ago versus today in size? Well, when I came on, we had three agents on our. So we had three agents. One of them left and went to Florida when we came on in June of 2019. Mm -hmm. um, so I when I, we I had a with my previous brokerage, we had a team of twelve. And uh, just because it was so expensive to work there, they were actually charging me a desk fee per agent. So it was really, really pricey, uh, a large desk fee and um, or a large fee. We, I don't want to call it a desk fee. So anyway, we, uh, we scaled down to a team of three, just got a and just more or less started over here. And uh, we hit the ground running. I mean, I came up here, I jacked up the lead volume and I jacked up the recruiting efforts. And uh, it's it's been uh, it's been a crazy ride. Uh, it's, it has been perfect. It's it's been it has been we've had plenty of bumps and there's gonna be more bumps coming. That happens with any growth. Growing. Um, I got way out of my comfort zone and I said I, I want to have I want to have the largest team in my market. So that's I think awesome. we do it now. I think we're pretty close if we don't have it yet. Yeah, that's great. You're gonna have growing pains like you mentioned. Yeah, when you're that growing, happens. It comes with it. Yeah, you're gonna learn. There's gonna be some learning lessons along yep. the way, but you don't you know without doing it you won't learn yep. those lessons. Yeah, yeah, I learned. <laughs> what, what kind of efforts, what do you recommend for team leaders who want to grow their teams, like for recruiting? What kind of recruiting advice can you give us? Uh, well, I'm going to start off here with mindset. Um, and this is something I had to learn. And one of my previous coaches, uh, it changed my life when he told me that, that it's actually not my responsibility to make sure, sure everybody on the team is successful. That isn't my responsibility. My responsibility is to make sure everybody has the best opportunity to be successful. And if someone isn't is struggling, help them, be there for them, and 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 commit to their success too. But if they're not willing to do what it takes or to follow the systems, that's on them and not me. So that was that was the first part. Kind of like if you have a trans like a buyer that keeps getting denied. You don't want to, if you're overly invested into somebody losing offers on it. Well. It, you're, you're going to go down with the ship. It's going to be hard. And it's, just, it's the same mindset here that, you know, some agents are doing great that are following the rules, following the rules, following the expectations and the action plans. And some agents don't, well, you, you can see the production levels between the two, between the two. And uh, don't be as emotionally invested into those who don't want to follow the plans. Right. So that was a big thing there. The other thing is also just, you know, especially in the beginning, hire as many as you possibly can and, and go from there. Uh, don't be as picky in the beginning as you are later on down the road. Right. Some of the uh, coaching tips that I've gotten, you know, in terms of recruiting based, you know, in, in, in accordance with what you're saying is, uh, you know, you hire, let, let the team agents prove 
whether mm-hmm. they are worthy of being on the team rather than yep. you trying to in advance in this interview process determine is this person worthy do they have the skills mm-hmm. there might be someone that you misjudge or, or sure. mischaracterize in an interview who has all of the skills and, and uh, let give them the opportunity to prove themselves our, our number one agent on the team and I love her we're, we're close now we're friends but I I didn't think we had a very good interview and uh, and I I was leaning towards passing mm-hmm. um, and uh, she was she was interviewed when we were a team of three when we were small and uh, and again we had a good relationship I liked her as a person I just didn't think uh, that she was gonna be a fit for the team and um, you know, I mean, I mean, frankly, when she in, interviewed with us, I mean, she did 12 deals her entire career. Um, now she's consistently between five to eight a month. And right. uh, boy, was I wrong. And I'm glad I, I didn't make that mistake. So um, right. I, and, and we became good friends. I, you know, I, I appreciate her as a, as a person, too. So it's, it's been it's been fun with her. But so, uh, yeah, don't prejudge. Don't, you know, give them the opportunity. Um, my one thing I won't budge on is you need, do need to be full time. I don't want to take part timers on, but as long as you're willing to be full time and willing to work hard, um, gamble on them, take a shot at them. Do you? Uh, what's your policy with new people, newly licensed? Uh, oh, I love them. Yeah. Okay. So that's yeah. good. You like that? Yeah. I, I, new agents are are, are great. Um, I, I tell people they don't come with the bad habits. I get to create the bad habits. <laughs> so uh, we have two agents on the team that were brand new within the last six months. One of them's already at two million in sales. I bet uh, bet Helena's probably sharing about three and a half, four million. So uh, I've done, I've had a lot of success with the newbies. Um, Right. I, 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 I don't, I, it might even be what I could call a niche that uh, we've taken new agents, but my, my sweet spots, uh, good people who just, uh, you know, floating around the two to four units a year. um, And um, I put them over the top. I'll bring them up to 20. Do, uh, do your hires, do you actively, do you actively have ads going out there for recruiting or do you actually recruit and look up numbers like some team leaders do? They'll, they'll look up all the agents in their market and actually pursue them. Or do you, are all your recruiting opportunities inbound? So that's why I said, so I just sent the IDX agreement to our association to get signed for me to get, uh, is a market view broker, uh, my broker matrix with the showing time version. So I, I'm waiting for that signature to come back because I am going to start doing it that way. Right now, everything I've been doing is through Wise Iron Indeed, is right. uh, ads out there and uh, do some searches uh, that way. So these so, are but I am, I'm so doing what you're talking about. That's I, as soon as I get the signature back, um, we're we're going to launch that. Like a, I even sent an email, kind of checking in this morning with my association, saying, "Can somebody please sign this?" <laughs> So, so you've been able to grow to this, you know, to this size just using the mm-hmm. that, you know, wise hire and indeed, and yeah. now you're going to be ramping up some some additional efforts. So, so Daniel, one of the one of the beauties of what we have here that we also are able to compensate other agents on the team to help us grow with revenue share. So we've also had agents on the team that have brought agents in. Um, that's been a that's been huge uh, for our team. Uh, the, the, that the fact that I can compensate and it doesn't even come out of my pocket, the ESP right. will actually compensate other agents on the team to help grow the team. It right. has also been a huge difference. Uh, I, I should look at the numbers. I bet 30% of our agents all came from another agent on the team. So your agents, your team members are helping in your recruiting efforts because obviously they're incentivized to do so. Uh, I, I I have one agent on the team when she made a thousand dollars just in revenue share, just helped me grow the team uh, a couple months ago. She was she was Jack. She was so excited. So and, and she's like, we want more of this. We need to grow more. And uh, it's awesome. Let's do it. Let's let's dive into it. Let's keep growing it. So and again, it, it wasn't a thousand dollars out of my pocket. It didn't cost right. me anything. That our brokerage pays for our agents to help grow my team. Yeah, so I, I don't think there's another platform that I can think of that would do that for us. That's a, a unique value proposition right yeah. there. Are you, are you in production yourself? Are you still out there uh, driving yeah. buyers around and going to no, listen? I haven't done buyers in a long time. I will do some listings. It's, I haven't. Um, looking right now, it's March. So I, it's funny. I, I took two listings last week. The last listing I took was October of last year. So uh, I don't want to say I'm out of production. Um, I'll, I'll take some referral business and some of that stuff. Uh, but uh, everything else, I, I feed the team. I'm really, really, I, I really, really focused on them. Uh, and even some personal, I had a personal referral that came in this morning and I referred that out to the team too. So um, I, I don't want to do a lot. I'd be okay doing four or five deals this year of listings. I, right. I don't, no buyers. I, I'm not going to take a buyer. So when you're making your goals for the year, do you have a goal of how many team members you want to have, you know, or, or is it, or your goals strictly production based and then you just, you hire to hit those goals? 
Yeah, I, I did both. I want to have a team of 50 by the time of the year. So I'm okay. really, really committed to the team of 50. I'd like to double us. Uh, and uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure we'll get there. But uh, I really, really wanted a team of 50. Uh, com combine that with Michigan and Florida. And like I said, I, I, I'm committed to 251 transactions. Right. And obviously, EXP has a model where we that you're incentivized if you introduce agents to the company sure. EXP. So you have you probably have a number of agents in your downline that are not sure. on your team. Is that right? Yep. yep. My my total organization uh, and, I, and it was just part of me. I think I have 58 people in our total organization. Um, yeah. I mean, EXP really clicked with me last year when we were locked down during COVID in May. Uh, my revenue share was enough to pay my mortgage, my car payments, my groceries. Um, I mean, we weren't rich, but all of our bills were paid. All my right. personal bills were paid where I didn't have to go into savings right. when we were complete lockdown. So uh, it, it was last May was when it really, really, I, it really it hit me. It's like, this is what it is. It provides security right. uh, that I don't know where else you're going to get that kind of security. I, I talk to agents all the time when recruiting and a lot of people are very proud of their splits. And that's so, you know, that, that's great. As my broker paid my bills uh, right. when we're locked down, and I don't know of any other brokerage where that would have done that. Yeah, that's that's really cool. Now, um, I know something that you have been implementing also for your recruiting is an an onboarding system. Yep. So, how how difficult would it be to recruit a large team if you don't really have a system for onboarding? That was one of my weaknesses until a few months ago. To we really that's something Michael and I really uh, invested a lot of time in was uh, systemizing the onboarding process. Um, I'll be honest with you that our old system we had an onboarding person and our system was call that person and she'll take care of it. Um, and there was a lot of bumps in that road. She did the best thing. Everybody did the best they could. It just wasn't systemized. It was, and that's what we need to be. So now that we're doing here, so actually we're, especially people that are new, uh, that are not licensed while they're going through the licensing process, they can also go through my onboarding process at the same time. That way, I mean, the biggest concern whenever you hire, especially a new agent is how quickly can they get paid? When is their first paycheck? Mm -hmm. Well, by, um, onboarding them the same time and going through training the same time as, um, uh, going through licensing, we're, sh we're, we're shortening that process. I, I want wow. people getting paychecks within 45 days, if not sooner. I want them right away getting uh, getting paid. So uh, when they start, they're fully trained. They're ready to go. It's not like you get licensed and now we're going to do two weeks of training. Like you're going right. to see the majority of brokerages. Yeah, that's great. That'd be attractive to anyone who's, sure. who's planning to get their license. So that's that's really cool. So Grand Rapids, I don't I don't know a lot about Grand Rapids uh, what what would attract people to buy in Grand Rapids? I, I've heard it's beautiful, but I, I I'm, yep. unfortunately I don't know much about it. I'll have to do a spring break there. Yeah, so well, uh, do a summer break, not a spring break. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so Grand Rapids is on the west side of the state. We are not Detroit. We're about two hours from Detroit. Uh, Detroit's a great city, but it's a uh, uh, there's a highway that goes down the middle of Michigan called 127. It goes right down the middle of Lansing. It, it is literally two different states. It's very, very different on the west side and the east side. So um, the, the beauty of a couple of things that are great about Grand Rapids, again, we're only two hours from Detroit. We're also only about two and a half hours from Chicago, which is so. And, and I love Chicago. I don't know if you've ever been to Chicago before, but I think Chicago is one of the greatest cities in the country. So, again, in the summer, it can get cold there. Um, uh, the Lakeshore, the West Michigan Lakeshore, I, I, I mean, I've been to Southeast Florida. Our beaches are nicer than Southeast Florida's beaches. Wow. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's just a great up and down uh, Lake Michigan. is just a little secret that a lot of people don't know about. It's all fresh water. Uh, yeah, it's all fresh water, but very, very clean, uh, very clean fresh water. Uh, beaches are huge. Uh, we have sand dunes, a lot of a lot of fun in the sand dunes. Um, uh, the economy in West Michigan is strong. Uh, we have a lot of stuff in the medical. Uh, brew, uh, beer brewing is huge here in West Michigan. We actually now it's turned into a tourist destination with all the brewers we have here. Just mm -hmm. like there are people that go to wine tours, there are actually people that do them for uh, uh, beer tours. And, uh, you know, Bell's, Founders, uh, we have so many different breweries here. Uh, it, in uh, in uh, Grand Rapids, so that's one of the things also, and uh, people are nice. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. know it's cliche, but there is actually something called West Michigan nice, and that uh -huh. is people yeah. are nice here. So, uh, are you experiencing the same thing that a lot of us are, where sellers are getting absolute top dollar for their homes yeah. and multiple offers, and it, it's insane. Uh, last Friday, we had four hundred and ninety-five homes on the market, active listings, and we have thirty-four hundred realtors. <laughs> so 3,400 realtors, 495 active listings. You can do the math. So um, it is extremely high buyer's market. We are seeing and starting to see a little bit of a pullback in the luxury. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, new construction, I mean, if you're under 200,000, 
uh, frankly, I don't even know where to start anymore. If you were under 200,000 and, and wanted to be in, in our county, we'd probably have to go to more of a rural area. It, it is a, very much a, uh, a seller's market, uh, of, uh, especially if you're not luxury. It's Yeah, there's bidding wars like crazy. We had one. We went against 77 offers. We were two out of the 77. And lost wow, the that's crazy. So, yeah, it's yeah nice. we're, we're seeing a lot of that here, too. Well, um, we're going to wrap it up here. Um, if anyone is interested in, in learning more about your team or joining your team or maybe transacting real estate, buying or selling, uh, how how do you recommend we reach out to you or connect with you? Yeah, connect with me on Facebook. If you search for me on Facebook, we can become virtual friends. It's great. Um, you're also always welcome to, uh, you know, uh, you can um, call me. My phone number is uh, uh, area code 616 821 1350. That's 821 1350. That's my personal cell phone. You can call or text me there. Awesome. Uh, but uh, social media is also a great way. So look for me, uh, you know, Jason Lash on, on Facebook. So, That's perfect. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate that so much. We're going to be communicating more in the yep. future. And uh, I thank you for being our special guest today. Well, thanks, and uh, if I can return the favor in some way in the future, Absolutely. please. please and, con connect. and congratulate you and all your success. You've done a lot down there too in Florida and Orlando. So uh, congratulations uh, thanks on much. your growth. Yeah, so. I appreciate that. Well, I just want to say thank you and uh, connect with Jason. If, if you have the opportunity, look him up on Facebook. Um, he's an awesome guy, awesome coach. If you're interested in learning about coaching, connect with either one of us. We'd be happy to do that. Yep. And uh, until next time, I'll see you all next week with Todd. Take care. All right. Thank you.